All right, so for number six, okay, we have that when the brakes of a car are fully applied, the car will continue to travel some distance before it completely stops. All right, yeah, that's true. This stopping distance, d, in meters, is directly proportional to the square of the speed of the car, v, in kilometers per hour. Kilometers times hour to the power of negative one. Guys. When I hear kilometers per hour, I'm very used to seeing kilometers per hour, okay? It's the most usual way to express it. Now notice, here it's a division sign, right? Km slash h, which is the same as me saying kilometers divided by hours, which is the same as me saying if I want to put h on top because it's an exponent, I would put h to the power of negative 1, okay? So whenever they say h to the power of negative 1, it's really just saying that. All right. I don't know. Just some people have that question. Might as well answer it right away. So they tell us this piece of information. When a car is traveling at the speed of 50 kilometers per hour, it will travel 12.3 meters after the brakes are fully applied before it da -da -da -da, completely stops. So for part A, we need to determine an equation for D in terms of V. Now, you guys, this exercise is really fucking weird. Okay, I'm just going to be straight up. I don't find it completely intuitive. It's like that one exercise in the test that's just kind of like, huh? Like, really? Just the first the first part of the exercise is, is like fucked up. And then everything else that comes is way more intuitive, okay? Point is, they tell us this relationship. They tell us that the stopping distance D, okay, in meters, is directly proportional to the square of the speed of the car, V, okay? So what a lot of people do here is that they say, okay, so D is directly proportional, right? So it equals to the square of the speed of the car. So square of the speed of the car. So speed of the car squared. Okay, a lot of people write it down like that. And they're like, okay, I'm good to go. And, and then they do the whole exercise and they only get half credit for everything because there's an error. What's the error? How can you check for the error? So here it says that... When a car is trailing at the speed of 50 kilometers per hour, it will travel 12.3 meters after the brakes are fully applied before it completely stops. So that means that D is 12.3 and that V is 50. So if equation A is completely correct, then it should work, right? Okay, so 12.3 for D equals 50 squared. Do you, do you guys think that's true? So 50 squared, I did it earlier, is 2,500. So 12.3 equals 2,500. Guys, is this true? No, 12.3 does not equal 2,500. So what's going on? The thing that's happening, and this is a part that I don't like about this exercise. The thing that's happening is that, okay, yes, the distance is directly proportional to the square speed of the car, but there's something else going on as well, okay? It's not just the speed of the car. There is something sort of like unexplainable going on. So I have this constant K that explains that thing that doesn't, that I don't know what's happening. And I still have my velocity squared, okay? So my new equation now looks like this, all right? We have 12.3 equals this K that I put in there times 50 squared. And so my sort of real equation is one that explains that big difference. It's this sort of con 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 constant that helps me figure it out better, okay? So what's the intuition I can share? Well, if you plug in the values that they give you and they don't equal each other as they should, then your equation needs to be changed slightly, see? Now, because I don't have any further information, all you can really say is that there is sort of a constant being applied to the velocity. Okay, which actually has to do with part C. Okay, part C, as you can see, it asks for after the brakes have been fully applied, identify one other variable besides the speed that could affect stopping distance. And so for here, I know it's the last part of the exercise, but just intuitively, context wise, I don't know, something that can stop the braking, I mean, that can change the braking distance is yo, is there snow on the road? Okay, are the wheels okay? Uh, is there wind? 
Is there mud? Okay, there's a lot of different reasons that your stopping distance is not going to be like perfectly just the velocity squared. And what does it explain it? Well, all of these reasons here, how do you express them? In this K, that's right there. Okay, so that is why putting that K there sort of makes sense. Okay, if K is equal to one, which is basically like no effect, okay? You're telling me that there is no snow, the wheels are in perfect condition, there is no wind, there is no mud, like, it's like the classic physics problem where like, everything is perfect, you know? Like there's no friction, there's no this, there's no that. Here, they don't give it to you right away. You can sort of tell that there's a constant because this here doesn't make sense, right? 12.3 does not equal 50 squared. And so because it doesn't equal 50 squared, then there has to be something unexplainable going on, unexplainable called k. And so now we find the value of k and everything else makes a lot more sense, okay? So again, that is a part of the exercise that I think is like very tricky, not very fair, but I was thinking about the best way to explain it, the best intuition, and I think there it is, okay? So what is the value of k? Well, I'm gonna have that 12.3 equals 2,500k, see? because 50 squared is 2,500. You wanna get K alone, right? So K is being multiplied by 2,500. What's the positive, the opposite of multiply? Divide, cierto? So divide here, divide here. K equals this, divided by 2,500. Trust me guys when I say that K is equal to, or actually, yeah, let's, let's check. So this divided by this. All right, cool. So K equals zero comma, zero point, sorry. 0.00492, okay? So now that I have this value for K, for part A, I can express my answer much more appropriately. So I'm going to make a little bit of space because we're probably going to need it later. But basically, for part A, you're going to write that D is equal to K times velocity squared. We know how much K is now, so we're going to put 0, 0, 0, 0.00492. That is my K times velocity squared. All right, and that is part A, all right? So there's my equation for D in terms of V. We figured out we needed a constant because we plugged in this piece of information and it didn't make sense. So we needed to find the unexplainable part, the unexplainable part called K. Then they tell us that the police can use this equation to estimate if cars are exceeding the speed limit. A car is found to have traveled 33 meters after fully applying its brake before it completely stopped. So we need to use the equation from part A to estimate the speed at which the car was traveling before the brakes were applied. Guys, I'm going to say something right away, okay? A lot of you might be thinking, God damn it, I'm not going to realize the day of the test that there's a K. I'm not going to do the thing of plugging in here. I'm going to forget it and fuck it. I'm going to get it wrong. Guys, you're in this test. You're in it to win it, all right? You might not get it, everything 100% correct, but you can still get points for effort. Like literally, there's points for effort here, okay? Look at part B, it says, use your equation from part A. So that means even if your equation from part A is wrong, if you use it and you plug in correctly 33, you're gonna get one point. You're not going to get two points, but you are going to get one point. All right. So guys, that's just like a tip for IB or for life in general. Just give it your best shot, dude. You're still going to get points. Okay. You're still going to learn. You're still going to blah, 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 blah. Okay. So yeah, just keep it in mind the day of the test. All right. There might be something really hard or you might have no idea how to do A or B, but you look at C and say, okay, that has nothing to do with math. It has to do with cars and you're going to. Part C, you're going to put snow and you're going to get one point. I'm not even kidding. I'm not even kidding. Like, you could not answer A. You could not answer B. And you answer C by putting snow, you get one point. All right? So, guys, get points wherever you can. All right? Sometimes you can't do A. Sometimes you can't do B. But you can do C. All right? Sometimes you can't do A, but you can do B and C. All right? That's fine. Just get points wherever you can. All right? Don't give up. Give it your best shot. Come on. For part B, use the equation from part A. Blah, 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 estimate the speed at which the car was traveling before the brakes were applied. So that means D, because it traveled 33 meters, D is going to be 33. Oops, 33. My K is still my K. 
and I need to find velocity squared. See? So, because I need to get velocity squared a lot, first things first, it's being multiplied by something, so I'm going to divide by that something. So, divide by that something, bada bam, bada boom, goes away with this. I end up with v squared equals whatever that is. So, it's 33 divided by 0 0.00492. See? Cierto. So, velocity squared is going to equal to 6707, blah, 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 0.3. 170 Alright, this is supposed to, be, supposed to be a point. Apologies about that. Which is very used to put in comma there. Whatever. See? Um, so to keep getting V alone, what because it's squared, what's the opposite of squared? Square root. So this goes away with this. Square root of that whole thing. Velocity is gonna be equal to that. So bada bim bada boom. Velocity is 81.8982, all right? If you want to do significant figures, you count 1, 2, 3. Look at this 8. Do you round it up or down? You round it up because you have a 9 right next to it. It's 5 or above. So with significant figures, you put 81.9. All right, don't forget your units. Kilometers per hour, okay? So that is for part B, all right? And now for part C, we already talked about it a little bit, but after the brakes have been fully applied, one other variable besides speed that could affect stopping distance. Guys, this isn't, this isn't even like math, it's just like context, see? So stuff you can say is whatever. I'm just gonna show you the answer key, okay? I think it's, it's gonna make more sense if I just show you it like that. As you can see here, there's some, some of the stuff we talked about. So here you have a puzzle answer. We said weather conditions. That's when we said snow. That's also when we, we said mud. Um, conditions are types of brake, weight or type of the vehicle, road material. Here's the wind we talked about. Here's the friction we talked about. Traction, the gradient, if the, if the thing has like a slope, right? It's going to be different than if it's flat. All right, guys, there's a million different things. You just got to land one of them and you get your point. See? The only thing you can't do is fuck up in the sense that you say uh, the time of the brakes can be slow reaction time or an inexperienced driver. Okay, And the reason we say that is because that has to do with the driver. It doesn't have to do with the car. See, um, But yeah, I mean, that's whatever. I mean, you can write down lots of these and I'm sure you're going to get the answer that you need. Okay. But yeah. The things down here, some of you might be thinking like, but that does affect stopping distance because if you're an inexperienced driver, then you're going to have a slow reaction time and the stopping distance is longer. Okay, you're right. But technically that has more to do with like the reacting, like the stopping distance considering reaction, okay? Or stopping distance considering the experience of the driver and stuff like that. In this case, as you can see, it's a bunch of sort of like external stuff see so completely external this one is more like internal it has to do with the drivers okay so again i know that part's like a little shitty but this is the weirdest exercise just because it's not very clear like part a is tricky part c has some specifications but once you get off when once you find the k everything else just kind of flows see so again i think this exercise in this test is it's hard, dude. It's hard, and I don't think it's very straight. It's hard because it's not straightforward. See, usually there's a, a very clear method to apply. In this case, the method is uh, you just have to assume a bunch of stuff. See, I don't like number six, but I try to explain it the most intuitive way possible. I hope it helped. And yeah, we'll see you around. Good luck.